Hi everyone, this video is part of Macquarie University's coding tutorials, and today we'll be learning about object interaction in Java. Specifically, we'll be moving on from cars to create our own rectangle class and implement two methods, compare to and scaled. Let's start by creating a rectangle class. We'll have a double length and a double width, leaving these as a default value of zero. These are doubles because they could be decimal numbers, but remember, for the purposes of this course, it's better to use doubles instead of floats when we're programming in Java. For the constructor, remember we have to write public, then rectangle with a capital R. Then in parentheses, we need a double length parameter and a double width parameter. Remember, we can call these parameters whatever we like. It's okay that we've used the same name as the instance attributes, we'll just need to use the this keyword when referring to the attributes. Here, we write this.length is equal to length and this.width is equal to width. And that's it for the instance attributes and simple constructor. In this case, we don't want someone to create a rectangle without specifying its size, so we'll skip the default constructor. Let's start with the compareTo method. As the name suggests, we usually create a compareTo method to compare two objects, the calling object and the object that gets passed in as a parameter. The rules for a compareTo method are that if the calling object is more than the parameter object, it returns 1. If the calling object is less than the parameter object, it returns minus 1. If both objects are equal, it returns 0. But how do we determine if a rectangle is less or more than another rectangle? We normally only think of these terms of numbers and not objects. That's why there's no perfect answer, but we have to try and think of the criteria that would best fit the objects we are comparing. In this case, equality might be if the areas are equal. We could create a helper method to help us calculate the area so we don't have to do the computation in the compareTo method. Feel free to pause the video here and try implementing the area method. We'll implement the area method here now. First, we want to write public, then a double return type, since the area will be the length times the width, which will give back a double. Let's call the function area, and we don't have to pass in any parameters. Then the code inside is simply to return this.length times this.width. Now, to create the compareTo function, let's give it a return type of int, since we'll be expecting a 1, minus 1, or 0. The name of the function can just be compareTo, and for the parameter, we need another rectangle object. It's common practice to call this parameter other, but it can be anything we like. To get the three options we've got in the comments into code, the control flow we need is an if statement for the first option, an if else for the second, and if neither of those are true, how else would be the scenario where they are both equal? So we write if this.area is greater than other.area for the greater than case. Notice that we can use this keyword when calling instance methods too so we can differentiate between this object's area and the other object's area. If that's true, we need to return 1. Now, for the if else, our condition will check if this.area is less than other.area, and if so, return minus 1. Finally, at our else, we can assume it's neither greater or less than, so the areas must be equal, and we can return 0. One final thing to note here is that the this keyword is specifically what we have to use when referring to the calling object, but other is just the parameter name. If we made the parameter some other name, like rect or r2, we would have to use that name instead of other. Additionally, if instead of returning 0 when both areas are the same, we could add more criteria to act as a tiebreaker such as comparing the length or width of the rectangles. For example, if the areas of two rectangles are the same, and the calling object's length is greater than the parameter object's length, we could return 1. We can add these conditions in the else statement, or write more else if conditions before the final else. Give it a go, as it's great practice. For practice, and to ensure our method is working as expected, let's write some tests. Let's make sure to add Jane to the project by editing the build path in Eclipse, or by clicking on the flask in the left hand side if in Visual Studio Code. For a refresher, please pause this video and watch our video on debugging with JUnit, either in Eclipse or Visual Studio Code. Now let's create a test class and call it Rectangle Test. Let's then add the two lines we need to import JUnit if they haven't appeared automatically. Now inside the class, let's write our test annotation and write public void for our first test. What we can do in this case is write one test for each scenario. We can put the tests all in one function, since we can reuse the rectangles we make for various tests. First, let's make a rectangle called R1 with a length of 10 and a width of 70. 
this rectangle has an area of 700. Then let's make another rectangle called R2 and give it a length of 20 and a width of 90. This rectangle has an area of 1800, more than R1. Now let's create an assert equals call to check that R1.compare2 R2 returns minus 1. We expect minus 1 as R1 is the calling object and R2 is the parameter object which has a larger area than R1. Now to test the case where both objects have the same area, let's make an R3 rectangle that has the same area as R1. Notice that because we're only testing area in the compare2 method, R3 can have dimensions like 7 by 100 and we would still expect the result of a function call comparing R1 and R3 to be 0 because their areas are the same. Now if we run the tests, we see that they have all passed and we've implemented the method properly. For practice, pause the video and think of any other tests or edge cases that could also be good to test and that might help us to improve the compare2 method. The final method we'll go through in this video is the scaled method. This method will allow us to create a new rectangle from another that is scaled by a certain factor. To write it, our return type will have to be another rectangle since the point of the function is to scale the rectangle calling object. That is, whichever rectangle the function is being called on and return a new one with the scale factor applied. We'll then need a single parameter of type double because a factor like 2.5 should be acceptable. Let's call this parameter factor. Now the algorithm we need to get a new scaled rectangle is to first create two variables to store the new length and new width that the returned rectangle will have. We'll initialize new length with the value we get by multiplying this.length by the factor. We do the same for new width, but with this.width. Then we create a new reference and call the rectangle constructor by typing new rectangle with a capital R and passing in the new length and new width variables we created. Finally, we return the new rectangle, which is a scaled version of the calling object. In summary, this method takes in a double as a parameter and calculates the new length and width of the rectangle by multiplying the current length and width by the factor. Then it returns a new rectangle object with the new length and width, ensuring we don't modify the actual calling object. Now let's test the scaled method. Again, we use the test annotation, write public void, and call the method test scaled. Let's create a rectangle reference called R that points to a rectangle of any dimensions, such as a length of 10 and a width of 20. Now, instead of calling the assert equals method immediately, we can store the result of scaled into a new rectangle object. Let's call the object R scaled and we initialize it to the result of R dot scaled. And for simplicity, we can pass in a factor of two. Notice we don't need the new keyword since the scaled function will already return a new rectangle instance. Finally, we can make two assert equals method calls. One to check that the length of R scaled is equal to 10 times two, which is 20 and want to check that the width of R scaled is equal to 20 times 2, which is 40. As we are testing doubles, we'll add a small delta or tolerance of 0.01. Now we run this test and we see it passes. Again, it's a good idea to pause the video and see which other tests you can come up with for a more comprehensive check. In this video, we learned about object interaction in Java and implemented two methods, compared to and scaled. During this process, we learned about how compared to is normally implemented in functions and practice calling instance methods of parameter objects within an instance method. It's important to remember that in compared to, a certain criteria is decided upon to compare the calling and parameter objects. We also emphasize the importance of understanding whether we are directly modifying an object within a function, which should not be an unintended side effect. In the next video, we'll talk about class composition and how we can use other objects as instance variables. See you there.